Let's take a look at my friend Richard's off-grid solar system. Richard has a great example of an off-grid solar electric system, which is a pretty small scale, uh, but he has been improving it over the years, and it's powering his critical loads like some small chest freezers and things, but it's things that he can plug in directly. It's a great example of what can be done, and he agreed to let all of you see it, and hopefully this gives you some inspiration. Earlier this year, I went out for a very long backpacking trip uh, in the Appalachian Mountains. And while I was hiking through the rugged terrain of Tennessee, uh, I, I'm hiking through the mountains and uh, one day I came to a road crossing and it's just a dirt road and uh, sitting there was a guy in his car named Richard and he was passing out cold drinks and snacks, which is kind of mind blowing uh, to be out in the wilderness and then find somebody there, but uh, he was uh, local to that area and knew the back roads and just enjoyed meeting people and meeting the hikers and kind of cheering us up <laughs> with a cold drink. So I very much appreciated that Gatorade that Richard gave me and the snacks. Uh, and uh, while we were chatting, uh, Richard actually recognized me from the YouTube channel. Richard was thrilled about it, wanted to tell me all about his solar electric system, and he invited me back to his home. Uh, like I said, he was local to that area, uh, to check out his solar system. And I'm like, sure, why not, let's do it. So he brought me back and showed off his solar electric system, and I, I commend him for uh, taking that initiative. I mean, he really wanted to have his own kind of energy independence, because he says he gets a lot of blackouts in that area, a lot of power outages. Primarily, Richard wanted to make sure that his multiple chest freezers uh, didn't go down. Now, originally, Richard had bought a small 1,000 watt kit from Windy Nation, and then he bought a larger one, a 3,000 watt inverter, uh, he had added on a couple more lead acid batteries, and really, he hadn't done a bad job, but it wasn't yet optimized. And Richard asked for my critique of it. Uh, now, normally I wouldn't do this just being a guest in somebody's home, but Richard specifically wanted to know if there were ways of improving it, so I gave him some advice. We're looking at his 12 volt system. It's got a 3000 watt 12 volt inverter and two PWM charge controllers. And then inside here, we've got all the batteries. So uh, this is one out wire with a 300 amp fuse. And then the batteries are set up daisy chain, which is a very common setup. And unfortunately, you'll notice that some of these wires are actually smaller gauge. So it's a two gauge wire. So now in essence, we have a 300 amp fuse and the potential to draw up to 300 amps uh, running through two gauge wire. And all of these terminals will wind up getting hot on this if you were to fully pull all the current. Uh, so my recommendation for this setup was to uh, put on a couple of bus bars and then run a separate set of wires, probably six gauge wire uh, from each battery up to the bus bar. When I first saw his solar system, he had a few solar electric panels out front on a little ground mount array that he built. And that looked great. It was running into some PWM charge controllers. Now these were pulse width modulator charge controllers. They're a little bit older technology and not quite as efficient. Then he had that running into a 12 volt battery bank with some AGM lead acid batteries. And they, the batteries there were daisy chained together. And he had a 3000 watt inverter, which was putting out pure sine wave. And he had an extension cord plugged into that where he had uh, some of his chest freezers and critical loads that he wanted to run. Now daisy chaining is when you're jumping from one battery post to the next battery post to the next battery post. If you watch my channel, you know I'm not really a fan of daisy chaining and I try to avoid it when I can. So he was chatting with me about, well, maybe does he need to buy a new inverter 
or uh, move up to 48 volts, uh, questions like this, which are very common for somebody in his situation. And my recommendation was to use the equipment that he had, but optimize it first. Go through and redesign the whole system using the equipment he already owned. Now this was going to keep the cost down because he already had all the major parts, but also it would help him learn about how to optimize the system, how to best set it up for his situation. My biggest takeaway for him was to add central bus bars instead of daisy chaining. Um, I added four batteries that I already had, two bus bars, positive negative of course. My wife was so kind to build the battery rack bench for me and I have room to add a few more batteries if I need. Um, this is under the staircase um, so I have a little room back there to charge some extra, uh, store some extra wire, solar supplies, but uh, let's take a quick look. Let me zoom in on that just a little. The bus bars are a big deal because each battery is now um, individually wired to the bus bars, which makes battery maintenance easy. There's my Blue C shutoff switch, 3000 watt inverter. And this was the biggest um, upgrade for me, was the uh, two midnight um, solar MPPTs. What a difference. Now something Richard already had in some boxes down there with the rest of his system were a couple of Midnight Solar Classics. These are MPPT charge controllers, which stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. He had not yet hooked these up. He was still using his older PWM charge controllers. Now the reason he hadn't hooked these up is because he wasn't yet sure if he, he, he was kind of saving them for his bigger 48 volt system that he eventually wants to build to take his entire home off grid. But uh, I suggested, hey, those charge controllers, they will work on 12 volts and 48 volts. So why not start utilizing them while he has them? Um, so the 12 volt, I have two separate arrays coming in. Uh, at 24 volts, they're wired in series of two. Um, so they're coming in and the charge controller is set um, set up for 12 volt since I have a, a lot of 12 volt um, inverters over the years. So that's what I went with. Um, so if my system or my say my inverters were to give up the ghost, then I would upgrade to a 48 volt um, add a couple more batteries and two more batteries. Wire these in series, like four, four twelves of 48. So, and then, um, yeah, um, make it a 48 volt system. But the biggest thing with the um, bus bars is the um, separation of the batteries for battery maintenance. Also, I can hook up, I'm going to hook up another 12 volt inverter, which I have, which is my old thousand watt inverter. Um, currently, I'm powering my, uh, my loads are my freezers, and uh, I've got a tankless water heater and um, running internet and my TV off of it. And even on the cloudy days, uh, it's doing fine. In the mornings, I wake up, it's, you know, 12.5 to 12.7, which is still good. Uh, it's not drawing that much. Um, so down the road, I will be running some more wiring and put some more loads on it. Um, biggest thing I learned though is uh, uh, the bus bars really do make a difference. Um, it's going to extend the life of my batteries. Uh, the MPPT is the way to go. Um, I'm really happy the the system really charges up much quicker as to where the old system where I had them daisy chained. Um, if I was to go with a maximum load, it could, you know, um, cause the batteries to, um, you know, not perform correctly or dry out the individual cells where the battery posts are. Um, David came, came by and looked at my system. I ran into him. He was in the neck of my woods and he was very uh, cordial, graceful. He had that look like, and I was like, okay, go ahead and tell me, give it to me. Um, and he, he was nice enough to explain everything and, um, help me dry out a little diagram with the bus bars and everything. And here I am, I upgraded, um, I already had the stuff sitting on the shelf for a year, life and work gets in the way. 
and uh, I found the um, hardest part was getting started and getting it done. We're going to take a um, step outside and I'll show you the solar panels and the um, combiner boxes um, that we added and upgraded to. Hello everybody. So there's my chicken coop, which we want to do some function stack stacking and added 12 uh, 100 watt um, solar panels on there on the top. You can see that. And this is the combiner box coming from the 12 panels um, off the chicken coop. Really have to thank my friend uh, Larry for helping me with this part on the chicken coop. Um, shout out to him. He helped me a lot. Um, kind of wish this was a little neater, but I'm going to wrap this in some conduit and uh, clean that up. And then I have um, grid power going out, which still needs to be done. But that's pretty much it. 12 100 watt panels there. I've got another 12 on top of the coop. So these eight panels you see on the right side, there are two 400 watt systems, which are each going into the um, 30 amp um, char PWM charge controllers. Um, that was my original system. And then I added um, four more 100 watt panels, make it 1200 watts here and those are going into a combiner box. So we went with a midnight uh, solar combiner box. Um, basically, these are in series of two. I numbered everything with a Sharpie just to make it easier um, down the road. MPPT charge controllers are more efficient than PWM. Now there's two reasons that they're more efficient. One, they're always tracking the maximum power point of the panel. But two, he's able to rewire his solar panels in series, meaning that he can bring in a higher voltage on the same wire, which means he has less uh, voltage drop and less losses in the wire. And this is the behind the scenes here. Try to do some good wire, wire management. Um, I did sacrifice about uh, six or seven zip ties in the process for temporary holding. Um, so what we did, we just kind of scabbed on over here the other four and um, added these on. Another upgrade I did is I used um, metal uh, uh, metal roofing screws for uh, metal roofs. So we get a good shot of that. Um, they do have uh, the rubber gasket on it, and I just got the metal or silver stainless look, and it just gives it a neater look. Uh, prior to that, I had decking screws um, with washers, so they started to rust out, so I had to clean up the uh, rust, and then I've got a little rubber on there for um, the similar metal separation. Basically went from... Um, 800 watts upgraded to 2400 watts and it's performing nicely um, I have this is facing true south here and my chicken coop is kind of like a little bit of a southeast it, it gets sun from about 9 till 7 it's still bringing in um, this this uh, gets sun from about 8 till 5 and then it uh, starts to get some shadows but uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the upgrades. Um, is there anything I would do different? Um, probably buy bigger solar panels because you're doing the same amount of work with smaller 100 watt panels. I mean, I could have, you know, three or 400 watt panels that were, would replace four of those. But I had those in the shed, you know, for a couple of years and just hadn't got around to installing them. So sometimes the, the hardest part is getting started. So just get started and um, just do it and get it done. Um, it is a lot of work, uh, but it's worth it in the end. So this worked out great. Uh, Richard said that his new battery bank system has been uh, running 
really well. Now, certainly if somebody else is in the same situation and they don't have an MPPT charge controller, yes, you will have to buy that. Uh, but this is Richard's story, and I think it's very inspiring for us to look at uh, taking a small system and uh, don't get so wrapped around the axle uh, trying to think how to build the biggest, best possible system out there. Uh, we can really do a lot with a small setup if it's optimized well for us. So with his new setup, he's been able to add more appliances to it. He's using more power each day than he thought he could, and the system is still not dropping down in voltage to the point where he's worried about it. Uh, he, he's able to get through several days of cloudy weather. Uh, so I commend Richard for doing such a fantastic job. So thank you, Richard, so much for giving me permission to show off your system on my channel. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.